Excel tutorial, Bruges Godfrey test. Multiple regression assumptions consist of independent variables correct specification, independent variables no linear dependence, regression correct functional form, residuals no autocorrelation, residuals homoelasticity, and residuals normality. This topic is part of multiple regression analysis with Excel Curse. Feel free to take a look at Curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading, or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. Residuals no autocorrelation consists of evaluating whether regression residuals or forecasting errors have a constant mean. This is evaluated through Bruce Godfrey autocorrelation test, which consists of using original regression residuals data as dependent variable together with original regression independent variables, adding lag original regression residuals data as independent variables, and assessing if lag original regression residuals data as independent variables are jointly statistically significant. For full reference, I recommend that you read Bruch, Testing for Autocorrelation in Dynamic Linear Models, published in Australian Economic Papers in 1978. As a formula, here we have the example of a multiple regression with two independent or explanatory variables, in which we have that current period, original regression residuals or forecasting errors, are equal to a constant plus a beta 1 coefficient multiplied by the first independent or explanatory variable, plus a beta 2 coefficient multiplied by the second independent or explanatory variable, plus the sum from the first to the p number of lags to include within bruce godfrey autocorrelation test of the corresponding gamma coefficients multiplied by previous periods, original regression, residuals or forecasting errors, plus this regression, residuals or forecasting errors. And what we're testing is bruce godfrey lagrange multiplier statistic p-value. If Bruce Godfrey Lagrange multiplier statistic p value was less than alpha level of statistical significance, then residuals were autocorrelated of order up to p with 1 minus alpha level of statistical confidence. On the other hand, if Bruce Godfrey Lagrange multiplier statistic p value was greater than alpha level of statistical significance, then residuals were not autocorrelated of order up to p with 1 minus alpha level of statistical confidence. Great. So let's go into our Excel file so that we can study residuals no autocorrelation with greater detail. Perfect. So here we are within Bruce Godfrey test Excel file. So first we begin within the orange colored Bruce Godfrey test data worksheet. Within it, within column A, we have dates, dates with the monthly frequency, and as we can see here from the beginning of 1997, and if we select A6 and we press Ctrl down arrow on the keyboard, goes all the way to the end of 2016, therefore 20 years of data. So we press Ctrl up arrow, down arrow to go into the beginning of the column. Then at column B, with a green color background, we have stocks. Stocks corresponds to the dependent or explained variable. And the stocks corresponds to SPY ETF investment vehicle adjusted close prices monthly arithmetic returns. SPY corresponds to the ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the standard Poor's 500 index and adjusted close prices because they were adjusted for dividends and splits. So this corresponds to those adjusted close prices monthly arithmetic returns. Then with a red color background from column C to column J, we have all the independent or explanatory variables. Within the rates area, we have the monthly effective yield of one-year treasuries, 10-year treasuries, high yield. Within the prices area, we have monthly inflation or deflation of consumer price index, producer price index, prices monthly arithmetic returns for oil. And then within the macroeconomic area, we have the monthly arithmetic change of industrial production index and PC or personal consumption expenditures. So first, we need to perform the original regression. The original regression has as dependent or explained variable stocks and all the independent or explanatory variables we mentioned previously. So that corresponding regression has been printed here within the orange colored original regression worksheet. Notice that this original regression was done before recording this video tutorial and also it's already been formatted previously. This was done by using here within the data tab, specifically analyze data analysis tool pack and the regression feature. So here we have the summary output, and if we scroll down specifically here, we have the corresponding intercept for the regression, 
and then all the independent or explanatory variables from the one-year treasuries all the way into PC or personal consumption expenditures. And here we have all the corresponding coefficients from B21 for the constant rate intercept all the way into B29 for PC or personal consumption expenditures. So back into Bruce Godfrey test data, the following step is we're going to create the columns related to that original regression with a blue color background. And first we're going to begin with residuals. Residuals corresponds to the difference between the actual data and the one fitted within the regression. So those fitted values, as we can see, for the corresponding calculation of residuals by selecting L6, those residuals are the difference between, in this case, B6, which is the actual data of stocks, minus the fitted value for that corresponding date and the fitted value for the regression. Therefore, within parentheses, as we can see here, first we begin with an original regression worksheet, the one, the one we just saw, at B21, that's where we find the constant or intercept. Notice that this cell has dollar signs before the column and before the row. That's to fix the cell so that we can copy this formula all the way down into the column here. That's done by pressing F4 on the keyboard or adding the dollar signs manually before the column and before the row. Plus, and then we have original regression B22. Notice again that the cell's been fixed with the dollar signs before column and before row. And in this case, multiply by C6, which is the value for the effective monthly yield of one year treasuries at that corresponding date. And so on, as we can see here, all the way into original regression B29, also fixed. Notice that all the corresponding coefficients have been fixed in this formula bar. And B21 is the one related to PC or personal consumption expenditures multiplied by J6 which is, as we can see here, that's the monthly arithmetic change of personal consumption expenditures at that corresponding date. So to copy the formula down, at the bottom right-hand corner of this square, we just double-click it and it copies the formula down. So just double-checking here, if we select instead L7, we see now that to calculate that residual, that's, as we can see, the difference, but in this case, now it's B7, which is stock's value for dependent variable at that corresponding date, Minus and within parentheses, we see that the coefficients have been fixed. So we again have original regression B21, the constant error intercept, plus original regression B22, the one related to one year treasuries. But now it's been multiplied by C7, which is the value of the monthly effective yield of one year treasuries, but at that corresponding date. And so on all the way to original regression B29, which is the coefficient for PC or personal consumption painters, notice being fixed, multiplied by J7, which is the monthly arithmetic change of personal consumption painters right here at J7 for that corresponding date, and so on for the rest of the column. And also, we're going to create a new column, which is going to be receals minus one. So here in this tutorial, we'll be performing Bruges Godfrey test lag one. So and this is an educational example, therefore it is not fixed and it can be modified according to your needs. So to create this column, first of all, notice here that at K6, we have the first cell with an orange color background to differentiate its calculation with the rest of the column here. And as we can see here, it has 0%. That 0% was only included again for educational purposes, so therefore it is not fixed and it can be modified according to your needs. From the following row onwards, which is K7, we see that it's equal to L6, which is previous periods data. If we select K8 here, we see that it's equal to L7, previous periods data, and so on for the rest of the column. The reason we create residuals minus one, which is previous periods, in this case, previous months residuals column here, before residuals is because when we want to do linear regression within Excel, the independent or explanatory variables need to be in contiguous cells here, contiguous columns, as we can see here. So the following regression is the one related to Bruce Godfrey test. And as mentioned within the slides, in this case, what we'll be doing is Bruce Godfrey test. As mentioned previously, it's going to be one lag in the corresponding test. This one lag only included as an educational example, therefore it is not fixed and it can be modified according to your needs. Therefore, we have as dependent or explained variable, we have the original regression residuals at column L, and as independent or explanatory variables, we have 
all the original regression in the pendulum explanatory variables, so from column C to column J, the ones with the red color background, and we are adding also as independent or explanatory variables, the original regression lagged residuals at column K. So again, we perform that regression with data tab, specifically analyzed data analysis, tool pack, and the regression feature, and the results have been printed right over here, as we can see within Bruce Godfrey test regression, orange color worksheet. As mentioned previously, this regression was done before recording this video tutorial, so the results also have been previously formatted, as we can see the summary output. If we scroll down just to double check, we have as coefficients here, intercept, then all the independent or explanatory variables from the original regression, from one year treasuries all the way into PC or personal consumption expenditures, and we added also as independent or explanatory variables the original regression residuals or forecasting errors, the lagged ones, as we can see here, residuals minus one or previous month's residuals. So scrolling up here, for performing Bruce Godfrey test here, we are going to here at G16 calculate the LM. That's the Lagrange multiplier test statistic for Bruce Godfrey test. And as we can see within the formula bar, it's equal to B9. That's the R square from the regression multiplied by B12, which is the number of observations. And then we're going to calculate for this test statistic the associated p value. Here we're using the same notation as the one being printed originally by. Excel regression, which is significance F, in this case significance for that LM, Lagrange multiplier test statistic, which is the p value. So here we select H16 and we see within the formula bar that it was calculated by using Excel built in function of chi square dot this for distribution dot RT for right tail, and within parentheses we have G16, which is the Lagrange multiplier test statistic, comma one, one because that's the number of lags we included within this Bruce Godfrey test, as mentioned previously, this number of lags were only included as an educational example, therefore they are not fixed and they can be modified according to your needs. So for Bruce Godfrey test, here we have LM, test statistic, and the associated p-value. This associated p-value for the test as mentioned within the slides. Excellent. So now that we finished studying Bruce Godfrey test, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading, or investment advice. Please pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finished this tutorial. Thank you for watching.